It's rare when a new keyboard gets released and it isn't just a carbon copy of a different keyboard. But once in a blue moon, I'll get a little something something that truly surprises me. And today, I've got that something special for you all and no, it's not a sponsored video. It's a Techware Phantom 87 Plus and let me tell you, it's a banger. But when I first opened up this keyboard, I wasn't expecting much. I just thought it would be a budget keyboard number 345. 67. Give it a nice spin. But as soon as my fingers pressed the keys, this keyboard started singing like a finely tuned piano. Not like an old beat up out of tune guitar in the closet for six years like I was expecting. But when I saw the price of only $55, my jaw dropped and my entire life flashed before my eyes. There's no way a keyboard this cheap sounds this good with zero mods. That's just not possible. But I tried to hold back my excitement because when something looks too good, it usually is. And there's always a few skeletons in the closet. So I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's dive deeper and see if it's actually as good as it sounds. When you open the box for the first time, you're presented with a... Let's be real here, uh, a boring looking rectangle. I had no idea what was in store for me. It's clean, I guess, but you can't deny that it's a gaming keyboard. However, the unboxing experience is nicer than I expected. It opens up smoothly and you get a thank you message along with a signature from the founder. How nice of him or her. Most budget keyboards come in a banged up box that looks like it was drop kicked a few times by an angry delivery person and when it shows up the keyboard is already hanging out of the box by a thread. But in this case it came in one piece. In the box you also get a dual headed keycap puller and a switch puller. That's kind of nice. And a standard black braided cable is also thrown in as well as a few extra switches. Okay so far so good. The keyboard itself has the classic black keycaps carbon gunmetal colored plate. That same font on the legends that every gaming keyboard has for some reason. You know, it's the same thing we've seen a million different times. It's nothing special. But all those thoughts left my brain once I picked it up out of the box as I was struck by how heavy this keyboard truly was. Now it's nothing compared to a custom keyboard with a full aluminum case. You know the type of keyboard you use as a bludgeon weapon? It's not that heavy, but it has a, a heft to it. A weight that you feel is associated with quality. Not like the fully plastic keyboard where you feel like a strong breeze could tear it in half. No, this keyboard feels durable. It won't slide around on your desk at all and I appreciate that about the keyboard. And that realization allowed me to take a closer look at the details of this initially boring rectangle. That's when I noticed the beveled edges, which give this gaming keyboard slightly more class to it. Like yes, you are a gamer, but you can also appreciate the finer things in life. A gaming intellectual if you will. In the corners, instead of having sharp edges, they were thoughtfully sanded down to a softer hexagonal look, which too adds class to the overall look. Like you're a gamer, but you also wear a monocle. I also appreciate the subtle branding on the front of the keyboard. The font is small, the color is subtle. Most keyboard companies like to go crazy and plaster their branding everywhere, but Techware did a good job in this case. <laughs> Get it? Because we're talking about cases. <laughs> now this does bring me to my biggest complaint about the overall aesthetics, the floating keycap design. Floating keycap designs are just tacky. And for those of you unfamiliar with the term floating keycap, it's when the case is not high enough on the sides and you can peek under the keycaps to see the switches. Now call me old fashioned, but I don't think our keyboards should be walking around in public showing off their switches, okay? You gotta cover that up. I mean, that would be like showing off your ankles. Oh gosh, that's too much. Now this may seem like a minor issue, but it does present a big problem later on. If you ever want to upgrade your keyboard and spruce it up with a set of designer keycaps, the keyboard will always look like a gaming keyboard, no matter what you do to it. You can never escape the gamer look if you have floating keycaps. Now compared with another budget keyboard like the Keychron V3, the V3 is the same size as the Tiger Phantom Plus but it doesn't have floating keycaps. The side of the switches are covered. Because of this, if you upgrade the V3, it will give the appearance of a higher quality custom keyboard. All because of that one simple design choice. Now if you never want to upgrade your keyboard, it's not really a big deal. But eventually you might get a hankering to do some tankering, like mod it. I don't know why I tried to make that rhyme. That didn't that, that didn't work at all. But there is a solution, and I bet you can guess what it is. The little pieces of green paper in your wallet. That's right. For an extra $10. Or if you buy the Phantom Plus Elite version, you can get a plastic magnetic cover you can pop on and it solves the issue. Well, sort of. At first the plastic top case seems like a great 
purchase. It's super easy to pop on. You just line it up and let gravity and the magnets do the work. Ooh yeah. <laughs> but upon further use, the issues start to become more glaring. If you want to move your keyboard around, the magnets aren't really strong enough and the case falls off easily. This gets really annoying after the first five times that it happens. Why do you do this to me? And to make matters worse, if you flip the keyboard over, the plastic top case doesn't even properly hug the corners of the case. You see those little gaps in there? Yeah. When I saw that, I literally gagged. <laughs> and the worst part is, the case also hides the cool beveled edges. So while I appreciate it as an option, it's not exactly a magic bullet solution for the floating keycap design. And in fact, I prefer without the plastic cover. Might as well save money while you're at it, huh? The keycaps themselves, color and font aside, are pretty dang good for being ABS plastic, which stands for Acrylo Nitron Boot the Dance Styrene. Did I do that right? I don't know. ABS keycaps typically leave greasy marks behind when you type on them, but in this case, they don't leave any fingerprints at all, which really surprised me. They're also shine through, so you can get that sweet, sweet RGB poking through. You gamers out there, illuminating the letters when you game at night and the lights are turned off. The Elite version does come with either two-tone white and gray or black and gray PBT keycaps that can add some style to your keyboard. But funnily enough, I actually prefer the ABS keycaps in this case. I found the legends on the PBT keycaps to look much and the colors to be bland. So in this case, you can pay less and get better keycaps. Funny how that works, huh? Save money, live better, right? <laughs> oh no, that's copyright Walmart. Oh no, censor, censor. So appearance wise, I give it a six out of 10. But what about the sound? Well, that's where this keyboard gets real interesting. And we need to start by looking at the guts of the board. That's where the real quality is at, especially for this $55 keyboard. It's keyboard surgery time. Most budget keyboards have an extremely hollow plasticky sound to them that's just sort of blue. But the Tagware Phantom Plus doesn't have that. Instead, you get a much more thoughty, satisfying sound that rivals keyboards that are double the price or more. The reason for this buttery sound comes from a combination of different elements. First, you have the piece of foam between the plate and PCB, which really deepens the sound of the keyboard. But on top of that, you also get an additional slice of boron foam in there as well, which gives it a lighter puppy element to the sound profile. Mm, such talk. Then if you venture farther down, below the PCB, you get not one, but two more pieces of foam, which act as a way to remove any hollowness from the sound and add weight to the overall build. So for those of us counting along at home, that's two pieces of foam between the plate and PCB, and another two pieces of foam between the PCB and case for a grand total of, drum roll please, four layers of foam which is absolutely unheard of for a $55 keyboard. A normal keyboard in this price range will have zero foam at all. And if you're lucky, you'll get a thin singular slice of foam. They call it foam, but it's really a slice of paper on the bottom of the case, but not with this bad boy. And the foam is just one part of the overall sound equation. That's right, there's more. If you take a look at what's responsible for the thawky spacebar, the stabilizers, you'll see where more of the magic is created. The stabilizers are lubricated properly with enough to get the job done right, but not too much where it oozes out everywhere into an uncontrollable sticky mess. Looking at you, Keychron. But what's even more interesting is that they come pre-clipped, so you get a really solid bottom out and it results in that deep, satisfying sound everyone chases with their keyboard, aka THOCK. Then there's some secret super keyboard tech, a small strip of rubber that runs flush with the plate right underneath the spacebar. Tech, that's right. I've never seen this before, but man, I was surprised to see it. It acts as another form of sound dampening, most likely to reduce any rattling that may occur when pressing your spacebar. It's a very interesting idea that I hope to see on more budget builds. But there is another element that plays into the sound profile for a keyboard, the switches. And this is where the pipe dream of a keyboard gets grounded in reality. Yep, that's right. Closet meets skeleton and vice versa. Now, with the switches themselves, you do actually get a pick of some really good options, especially if you're into custom keyboards. What jumped out at me first was the lack of a clicky switch option, which for me personally, I'm okay with. I, I hate clickies. But for you clicky diehards, I do feel for you, but your sacrifice was not in vain. 
thing. It gives us tactile and linear lovers more options at the expense of your own. For the tactile switches, you can choose between orange and brown. The orange switches are very interesting. They're ultra tactile and you can tell they're heavily inspired by Holy Pandas so they have that heavy snappy bump to them. This is perfect for those who really like to feel every keystroke when typing. Some people are like that, you know? You also get the classic brown switch. Not much to say here, it's just a small bump. It's a brown switch. And for linear, you get to choose between pink and red. The pink switches are the closest to an enthusiast switch. They're heavier at 63 grams for the bottom mount and have a nice bottom mount feel. The red switches are like a normal red switch, light and linear. Oh wait, did I mention they're all pre-lubed? That's right, each switch comes factory lubricated, which results in a buttery feel with no spring pink. Perfect if you don't want to get your hands dirty and lube them yourself. But I bet you're thinking, these options are all good things. Where's the beef? The skeleton in the closet. Well, the Tegmar Phantom Plus sockets. While hot swap, so you can swap out the switches, are three pin and only compatible with Otomu or Ago CS switches. This greatly reduces what switches you can use in the future. That means no cherry switches or a long list of enthusiast options. So you can't mod the keyboard any way that you want to, but you could mod the keyboard. With that being said, the switch options that come with the board are pretty nice. So you might not want to replace them anyways. And Ago CS switches are pretty good. So it's not the end of the world. But if you do want to splurge a bit and upgrade to the Tagwear Phantom Plus Elite for an extra $25, it does come with 5 pin hot swap, hot swap sockets that are compatible with every type of switch. So that's an option for a little more of that green paper. Here's what the switches sound like. Not bad, huh? Now there is software for this keyboard, but after seeing LTT get hacked, I'm very suspicious of downloads, so I took a hard pass on this one. Sorry guys. But for some reason, it just seemed a little sketchy. But there is plenty of hardware you can use if you're too much of a chicken like me, <laughs> such as a ton of RGB controls including brightness, LED speed, and direction. There's also six different presets. And this RGB spectrum thing that lets you choose your color by clicking a key. All the RGB settings are listed on this little piece of paper included in the box. And to wrap this up, this keyboard can only be connected via USB-C unless of course you go with the Elite version, in which case you can use Bluetooth or wireless 2.4G. You know, if you want to take it on the go, use it with your laptop, Android, tablet, phone, whatever. So if you are interested, I'll link both of them down below. But at their current prices, I personally think the Tegwar Phantom Plus is the better deal of the two at $55, and the Elite isn't really worth the $80 price tag. And alright, sound test, here you go.